and here's Cunningham in the pocket, throws down the middle of the field, and Atwell gathers it in at the 40-yard line. Atwell cuts right, he's on the loose. They're not going to catch 2-2 Atwell, 10-5, touchdown, Louisville, 74-yard. Book claps and gets it, being chased out of the pocket and dumped. Back at the 39-yard line, Okiki, the first of about three different Louisville players to close in on him. First and 10 from the 35 for North Carolina State. And this is a quick pitch, and Lusane fumbled, and Louisville pounces on it. Lusane lost the ball at the 40-yard line, and Louisville is right there to get it for their third turnover of the game. Tiberius Peterson with the fumble recovery. What I talked about last night, what Chris talked about today, was fighting. How much fight you got in you, man? How much fight you got in you? Not only on the football field, we talk about life. How much fight you got in life? Because you know you're going, you got to go through it, man. First half, we didn't do that great. But the second half, you guys came out and dominated the second half, man. That was a great job of finishing the game. And fight like that. Here's a play fake. He rolls left, has some space wide to the 20, 15 to the 10, pulls out of a tackle, touchdown! Cunningham with the keeper runs in his sixth touchdown this year from 19 yards out. Second down and 12, Hawkins is the back, and here's a play fake and a throw down the middle of the field and down the sideline, actually caught by Ford down the sideline, and he scores! King gets this away. This one's pretty good, a little wobbly, and he's got it at the 32, fumbles it! Loose football! And, oh, I think they got it back. No, now Louisville picks it up, and here goes Abdul running in. What we did tonight, it's only just the second team in the history of the ACC to go from 0 and 8 to 5 and 3. The second team in the history of the whole ACC. So what you guys did tonight is unprecedented. It's unprecedented, man. So you, you guys deserve it. You deserve to celebrate. You deserve to feel good about yourself from where you came from and where you're at right now. Unbelievable job. And guess what? We ain't finished either, guys. <laughs> Bentley bends over the ball. But Cunningham awaiting the snap. Shifts Hawkins from right to left. Cunningham back to pass. Better protection. Throws it. Complete open receiver. 25-30. Atwell darts to the 40. Atwell is free down the sideline. And he's going to go. Touchdown. 2-2. Atwell. Louisville scores on yet another big play. Flush. Sacked. Burns broke through and grabbed it by the ankle. Makes the handoff. Looks to throw. Now being chased. And dumped. And the ball came loose. Cunningham steps up the pocket. Throws a long downfield. Open man. Quick throw out to Atwell, who can throw again, and he will. Wide open, caught at the five-yard line, and a touchdown for the Cardinals. 2-2 Atwell, hooks up with Marshawn Ford. To the 20, uh-oh, almost broke loose. Spins ahead and loses the ball. Louisville's got it. Kicker's got it. The kicker fell on the football. Louisville's two safeties pass at the goal are about 20 yards deep. Here comes the play. Now he steps up and runs over to the left. Still running, still running. Spins away from one hit and caught for the line. out a monster turnaround season with a bowl game win, 38-28 over Mississippi State. These guys right here back December when we first got there just needed somebody to love on them. Our staff did an unbelievable job coming in here, being consistent every single day. One thing we talked about was attitude and effort, and these guys right here brought that every single day. I'm so proud of them, and I'm so proud of Car Nation and stands too, people. Yes, sir. Thank you. We had 27 seniors that stuck it out with us this year. I'm so proud of those 27 seniors. That was for those guys. And then it was also for these young guys on this football team and the ones that just signed with us in December, which we got 18 of them coming up in January next week. They'll be there. So this program moving forward, they know they don't belong to a championship caliber program. That's what they know. We can't wait to get started for next season and play, the, and play next season. So, But tonight, we're going to burn up Nashville, I can tell you that. <laughs> I'm a Louisville fan, I think there's something in the water there. I mean, Sat's done an unbelievable job building momentum, and now they may have a chance to capitalize. There's a lot of momentum with this program. They're going to score points. There is no question Louisville is going oh, yeah. to light up a scoreboard. Big picture for Louisville. Expectations are high, and, and they should be.
Welcome everybody to the 2020 virtual kickoff luncheon for the Louisville Cardinals. We wish that we could all be together today. It would have been such an exciting event, but thank you for tuning in. The expectations are sky high for this Cardinal football team. So much returning talent. Everybody back on the staff but one coach. The expectations are so high, and we're so excited to kick it off on September 12th. First off, we want to thank our presenting sponsors, Canon and Axis Audiovisual. Thank you for your support of Cardinal Athletics. And we also want to thank the Galt House for your support, and we look forward to hosting our first event there next year. Now, let's take a look back at last year. Everything that we're going to do here, we're going to compete for championships. You guys didn't pick me, but I picked you guys. You got small goals day by day, and then those are going to accumulate the wins, a lot of wins. That's right, go! I'm proud of you. I'm extremely, extremely proud of you, the way you fought. Listen, that's a good football team. The guys played in the, the semifinals last year. We're going to be good this year. We're going to be good this year, right? We're going to be good this year. Man, what a story the Louisville Cardinals have been. Scott Satterfield's first season at Louisville has been the most impressive one-year rebuild in college football this year. This feeling right here, you got to remember, this got to be the norm. This got to be the norm right here. We want to come in here doing a celebration every freaking time we play. That will is straight down the sideline. Hall runs wide to the 30. Hall down the sideline. He and his staff and those kids have bought in, coming off 2-10. and 10. I want to win. I know you want to win. I can start. You want to win. And for that crew to be going to a bowl this year, uh, that is a spectacular great job. I got news for you, he's going to win some more before it's over. We talked about this last night to these 27 guys that stuck it out with, uh, with all of us. The 27 seniors that stuck it out. What you guys did, where nobody thought you could win a game, mm -hmm. pick last in the ACC, mm -hmm. pick to win three games on the season. Mm -hmm. Hey, guess what? what? We won eight games! What a fun trip down memory lane that was. An 8-5 and five season coming off a 2-10 and ten season, and all the staff but one returning this year. So many starters coming back. Really has me fired up for this Louisville football season this year. Now, let me introduce the Vice President and Director of Athletics, Vince Tyre. Well, thank you for joining us today. We're, uh, we're coming to you from a special place. We're at the uh, top floor of the Gold House Hotel and the Swizzle Restaurant, so you can kind of see uh, that we're sitting here with the beautiful river view behind us um, to present you the 2020 virtual kickoff luncheon for the University of Louisville football. You know, I'm excited about uh, putting this on today, but also more excited about having our sponsors. Canon has always been a terrific sponsor. Access Audiovisual, uh, great sponsor as usual, helping us in these events, and then obviously the Gold House is one of those that we're relying on this year, and we hope to hold next year's event live at the Galt House and not from the Swizzle, but uh, you know we'll play it by ear. So also want to thank the, the athletic department, I'd like to thank the support of our board of trustees, the athletic board, Neely Bendapudi, our president, has been terrific and a great supporter of our athletic program, and to me personally, I can't say enough about that. Uh, but this is a, uh, a different kind of year with uh, COVID and, and certainly we're trying to manage around it. Uh, you know, you guys have been great. Our fans and supporters have been terrific. Card Nation, uh, you've shown your true colors. And, uh, you know, we know it's testing of you as well. Uh, we hope to get started and plan to get started on September 12th. But between here and there, and hopefully maybe uh, this afternoon, we'll have an email out related to what our, our fans in the stands plan is. And we've been communicating with the governor and working with the office, trying to make sure that we have a very safe, feasible plan that operationally we can pull off on behalf of you as our guests coming to games. And we'll let you know that as soon as we can. Again, it may be as early as uh, this afternoon. But from that, let's move on. Uh, can't tell you how excited we are about the season getting going. Uh, it's always a time when you get here and you start to reflect back and 
sort of looking back at how last year ended, so you think ahead to how this year is going to go. And uh, last year we started, we had a new coaching staff, new head coach, a lot of questions and issues around the quarterback position earlier in the year. Uh, defensively, a lot of inexperience, and uh, the fourth defensive coordinator in four years. And uh, boy, did the year uh, start off a little uh, interesting. But as the year moved on, the coaching staff really came together. Just terrific. What a great staff we have, led by Coach Scott Satterfield. Scott had an amazing year, probably the best in the ACC and one of the best in the college football in his early career. We're so fortunate to have his leadership. And I think that really secured things for us offensively. Uh, he was a mastermind. And the quarterback position became one of our strengths, not one of our weaknesses as the year moved on. And so many uh, offensive weapons like Tutu and Hawk, Dez, Big Ticket, all those nicknames of guys that really performed extremely well. And then on the defensive side, um, you know, we shored things up as the year went on. Uh, Dorian Etheridge in the middle, a uh, great veteran, be back this year uh, to lead us, and Rajay Burns, just a couple names there that, that we have. But we've, we've got some great veteran experience now that we didn't have last year. And then a couple of recruiting classes worth of depth certainly has put us in a position that uh, you know we, we wanted to be in, but we're certainly in this year uh, moving ahead. So as we look ahead, you know, we're excited about uh, the Western game on September 12th. We're also excited about the schedule. Uh, COVID threw us a curveball. Uh, now we're going to play 10 conference games, not eight. And we still have a Notre Dame game, which will count as a, uh, a conference game. But a great home schedule. Uh, following up the Western game is uh, we'll have the Miami Hurricanes in town, which we've, we've hosted them before and, uh, and been successful. We hope to be again. When they show up, we're really excited. Again, just mentioning the things, having the veterans back. Uh, great experience on both sides of the ball this year. Uh, Coach Satterfield and the staff stayed intact. As you know, continuity is so key to, to having a great program and having a year in, year out, year out success. And that's what we're excited about. And the fact that this will be interesting, uh, having one division in the ACC this year instead of two, and the two best teams will go to Charlotte for the ACC championship in December. So we're hopeful to get off to a, a great start with a non-conference win and then build right into that. Um, you know, as we get into uh, the conference games. We certainly ended last year on a good note with the Music City Bowl, and man, the fan support there was terrific. You know, throughout the whole weekend that we were down there, and then obviously the game, we kicked their butt, and there was nothing uh, more beautiful than that. So it was a great way to end the season and rally into uh, to this one. And while the COVID virus may present a uh, different challenge for this year, I can tell you that our, our coaching staff and players have, have been terrific. They've really worked hard. Uh, the spring, the summer, and preparing for the fall, and, uh, and getting things going, and, and to get you excited about what we have in front of us, uh, I'll let uh, Ann, what Coach Satterfield has in line for us, take a look at this video. I think you'll be hyped after this. Director of Athletics Vince Tyree unveiled a phased plan Thursday to have student athletes return to campus. The announcement today gives Cards fans some hope regarding sports in 2020, but that also leads to some other questions, such as what's the current status of college football this fall? 98 4, Kumatas. All right, we're good. Go ahead. Jaya uh, Diaby, Georgia. Fifth year. Oh, oh, line. Yep. This is your group, guys. We're, this is what we're trying to build. You guys are going to stay together, okay? This is our group, so try to eliminate contact outside of this group. On judgment day, I won't fade away. I'll be pushing on. Let's go! Let's go! Till the rivers run dry, I've got to try, try, try. Yeah, well, I'll be pushing on. Oh, get up, Homer, get up. Oh, That's our goal right there, man. If you don't want that to be your goal, 
Then you just walk up, down these stairs, and go on out of here. Or back there, it don't matter to me. We don't want you in this room if this is not your goal. Welcome back, everybody. It's a pleasure of mine to introduce you guys to Des Fitzpatrick and Dorian Etheridge, guys that have made plays on the field for the Cards for a number of years. And we are going to get some feedback from them, some great information from them on what this offseason was like for them and how camp has gone so far. So we're going to start off with Des. How different has this camp been compared to the four others you've been a part of here? You know, it's been slightly different, but uh, we're just happy to be back in, you know, check in just the protocols and the procedures that we have to go through because of COVID-19 hit. But, you know, we're just happy to be back and playing football. So that's the best thing. Absolutely. Dorian, what was your off season like? You know, you're back home. Yeah. Uh, it, it's had to be tough to be away from here, but how much different is an off season like that compared to normal? Um, it, it was different as far as just the, just the structure that we would get when we were around here. Just like the, the meals, and you know, we, we often like take those things for granted. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll, we'll always, we'll sometimes see them as like a burden, just having to just check in the breakfast or check in the lunch, even when you're not hungry. But when you're at home, it's just like, you're like, man, I'm hungry. Like <laughs> all the time. Just, so it's, it's just one of those things where it, it was, it, it was a lot of self-motivation. It, it was a lot of self-motivation just to get up and work out every day. Cause it's a lot easier to work out when you got the whole team around you. And we, we push each other. That's one of the things we always like. We emphasize like we push each other leadership. But it's just it's hard to be a leader when you're by yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and as hard as you guys work and as driven as you guys are, that probably gave you guys a chance to get a step up on your competition because I, I know that you both handled business. Des, what are your expectations for the offense this year? You have a great 2019 season, a ton of big plays. What's your expectations for 2020? I expect our offense to be like lightning in a bottle, you know, just so many different weapons across the board. You know, we have Hawk on foot, we have Sonny right behind him, we have, you know, Malik throwing the ball, we have Tutu, All-American, we got the front line right there, Cole Bentley coming back, Robbie Bell, obviously, you know, we have me back there, we have receivers coming up. Well, I just feel like we all have a core that we've all jailed together that we're just ready to go. And I feel like if we all do everything that we can do, if we all push each other, if we all do our 111th, everybody does their 111th, the sky's the limit for our offense. And I feel like we can do much better than we did last year. Yeah, that, that would be incredible because you had a great, great offense run last year. I know Card Nation's excited about this offense. This defense, now for the first time in your career, Doran, you get to play in the same scheme in back-to-back -back years. Mm -hmm. How beneficial is that for a defense? It's just, it's just so re refreshing. Just not to have to <laughs> day one installs fight for spring ball or for fall camp. And you know, of course, like we, we would start over like each, like each camp, but it's just, it's really a review. So we can just get into like the finer details that other than just trying to learn a defense, we can, we can play faster. I mean, we go over the install and it's just like, it's really just like a, a little five second review. You know what I mean? So right. it's just one of those things where everybody can just fine tune those little things that can really take us to the next level. That's great. Des, after all that you guys have been through this off season, what will it be like to take the field on September 12th? You know, I feel like it will be an honor, honestly, just everything that we've gone through. You know, we've, we had, thankfully, we had a week of spring ball, you know, and then we left for spring break, everybody thinking we're gonna come back and then Corona hits and you know, we don't see the coaches, we don't see you guys for three months. So mm -hmm. everybody, you know, the speculations of the season, not season, you know, the speculation of Big Ten canceling, you know, Pac-12 or Pac canceling. So, you know, we're just all been grinding, you know, in the back of our heads, people's been talking, you know, the social media and everything. So 
that first game is going to be, I feel like everybody just going to be ready. And so I think it means everything. That's great. Dorian, what kind of leadership role have you taken so far at this camp? I mean, I, really just being like a vocal guy with the defense. We've had, we got a lot of young guys that have came in and um, Juco guys that have came in. But I mean, I, I think they're ready to play. So it's just like to build that depth, we, we got to have leadership. I mean, we got to have like the show them. I mean, you can tell them all you want, but I mean, they got to actually see how to perform on the field, learn how to practice. That's the thing that a lot of guys don't know how to do when they first get to college, just learn how to practice and just, just build those habits. So really just, just being vocal and, and making sure I lead by example at all times. Awesome. Des, heading into your senior season, what do you want for your final season at U of L? You know, I want it to mean everything for me, for the fans, for my family. And I just want to give back to everything that I owe to, you know, the University of Louisville. You know, I've, this is my fifth year, you know, returning. And, you know, I returned for a reason because I feel like there's a lot that I still have to prove. And I want to leave every stone unturned. And so, you know, I'm ready. I want to bring a championship, ACC championship, national championship back to Louisville. And that's the reason why I came back. And that's the reason why I came here in the first place. So, you know, that's what I'm most focused on. And so I think this is the team for it. Perfect. Dorian, how much better can this defense be in 2020? It could be night and day. I mean, we had we had flashes last year where we would do like we would do the majority of everything right, but it'll always be that little one little play or that one missed assignment that it just kind of like overshadowed the good things. And I change just think it's just like this year with all of the experience we have, well, eight starters coming back on defense, it can be one of those things where it can really be special. And I know, I mean, that's like a little cliche thing, but I truly believe that. I mean, this is our first year having the same D coordinator. Right. right? So it's just like, I mean, it's, 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 that's already a step in the right direction. It's just, it's just like for us, to, we have a lot of leaders on, on the defense. And if everybody just show up and just do what they do every day in practice, then it'll be night and day from last year. That's great stuff, guys. Thank you so much for all this information that you provided for Card Nation. On a team full of superstars, it's, it's awesome to have two guys, two tremendous leaders with so much talent like yourselves pour in to this virtual lunch and give, give the fans a taste. And, and we would have all loved to have been all together. You all would have gotten huge rounds of applause. But thank you so much for your time here today. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Welcome back. I'm now here with Coach Satterfield. We're going to get a little preview on this 2020 season. And first off, Coach, let's start off. How proud are you of how everyone has handled this difficult situation? Yeah, I'm really proud. I mean, it's, um, you know, obviously we're going through something that nobody's ever gone through. And, and, and really, and particularly, I think um, our strength and conditioning staff, along with our training staff and our medical team um, here at the University of Louisville have, have been outstanding. You know, all those three to four months, we you know, had time to plan everything to, about the return to campus. Um, and our guys have done a great job. You know, you know, kudos to our players for, for doing everything that we're asking them to do. And it hadn't been easy. I know that. You know, with uh, you know, coming in with the temperature checks, the mask wearing, and you know, doing um, you know all the protocols we have to go through. It's, it's a lot different. And but these guys have done a great job with it. I'm excited to be where we are right now, and, and with this opportunity to play a great season. Yeah, all those sacrifices. It shows how important it is to the staff and even the players to make those sacrifices. It shows what how bad they want to play in 2020. Uh, looking at this season, looking at your coaching staff, you only lose one coaching staff member, goes back to Appalachian State last year. How important is, is it for you and your staff to have that continuity year in and year out? Yeah, I think for us, you, you want consistency. I think that's the biggest thing. And so consistency on a staff is, is outstanding to be able to have that year in and year out. Uh, we had that when I was at App State, and, and, and now, you know, really kind of the same thing. And it's not really – not only the full-time guys, it's also your support guys as well. You know, you know, we lost a few of those guys, but we were able to keep some as well. And, um, you know, everybody understands their role. I think that's what it comes down to. You know, we, we, we know where our role is. We're going to do it to the best of our ability. And then that filters down to our players. Our players know, know these coaches. They know how they coach. They know how they teach, um, all the different things. Um, and. You know, when you have that consistency, I think you're just getting, getting at a higher level of play. Um, you know, I, I feel like the kids get more confidence that way. Um, you know, and so we, you know, kind of this year and a half into this thing now, and, and things are going really, really well. And um, again, uh, everything's pointing to us to this season. You know, one of the main reasons you don't want to miss a season like this is because we feel like we have great chemistry. We got a great group coming back, and we want to we want to show and prove 
um, that what we did last year wasn't a fluke, that, that this year could be something special. What have you seen from a leadership standpoint so far through camp in this uncertain time? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think the leadership is it's really showing. It's not, you know, you think about COVID and, and, and the virus part of it, but you also look at the social unrest that's happened throughout the country. And I think you know, we've had a lot of players step up and, and, and stand out and, and lead in, in a great way, um, as well as coaches. And, uh, you know, so I'm really proud of, of everybody here in this building, um, the things that they have come out and, and done and said. and. Um, you know, and I think we'll continue to do that. And, and so um, uh, 2020, we all know 2020 is going to go down as uh, one of these years that is remarkable and, and a lot of it in bad ways. Um, but, but I think also when we come out of this on the other side, it's also going to be remarkable in a lot of things that got done and accomplished throughout this year. And I think that's kind of what we've been focused on here within our program is, is trying to stay positive and what are the things that we can do to, to have a positive impact on society as well as our community. And, you know, so yeah, I'm really proud of our guys and our and our team around here, and um, you know, and I think hope it's also brought us closer. I mean, it's the other thing. You know, it's it's just brought us. I think that the tight knit group that we do have, and and we'll continue to have because of the things we've gone through. Yeah, facing adversity is either going to pull you apart or bring you together. Uh, I'm happy to hear that it's bringing this football program together. And with all that's happened since March, how excited are you to kick it off on September 12th? Yeah, I'm really excited. You know, we, we've had a really good summer. You know, we talked about the return to, to, to campus protocols and we brought our guys in in phases and that, go, that went really smooth. And then, you know, now going through camp and, and really it was a short camp, you know, before school started. Um, we're back in school now and, and so it's kind of like a normal schedule now, but we do have several weeks before we actually play a game. So um, I, I think we're going to be very anxious to play. You know, you get to a point in practice where you're tired of hitting the same person over and over and over and you want to and see a different opponent. And so, you know, we're just excited. We, we're ready to get on the field. And, and since our bowl game last year, I, I feel like we've just continued to get better and better throughout this, the year and the season, um, this all season, um, headed into this season. So, um, yeah, let's put the ball down. Let's play somebody. There wasn't a whole lot of expectations on the 2019 team. You're coming off a 2-10 and 10 season where there was a lot of disappointment. Coaching change happens. All this happens. And now heading into 2020, after a great season last year, so far improved, how has this team now managed to handle the expectations that are now fairly lofty? Yeah. Well, I, I think we, we want those expectations. Right. You know, we, we want to be, you know, picked a team that, that, that's going to be, be a contender, not only in our league, but nationally. And I think that's, that's where we want to be. And so, you know, we've had, we talked about it um, when we first started practice about there's been some individuals get some accolades and, you know, getting on these preseason award lists and, you know, preseason all ACC and all that. Those things are great and we all want that. But the reason why they're, they're getting that is because they played as a team last year. And so, I think the one thing that we've kind of gotten across since we've been here is that each and every one of you guys have to compete. Everything you do every day. And when you do that, you're going to get better and better as an individual. And so, you know, these guys, they don't really care about that stuff. I mean, it's great to get those accolades. You know, at the end of the season, we want to be able to look back and say what a great year that was. It was a great year for Hawkins or for Tutu or Des Fitzpatrick. I mean, you know, so, so you, but you stay in the moment and you focus on competing, doing the best you can. Those things will happen. Uh, you know, so no, these guys are ready to get on the field and, and prove um, that they're really good football players. Yeah, individual accolades come with team success. Absolutely. That, that's the way it always works. My sophomore year here, I'm an All-American. We're ranked top five in the country. Play better my junior and senior year and make none, none of the right. lists because we weren't any good. That's right. What have you guys accomplished in the first two weeks of fall camp? Well, a, a lot, I think. You know, we, we really we got our veterans in, and they, they've getting some reps and those type of things. We're really kind of focused on the young guys. You know, you're really trying to develop depth um, and try to get those guys coached up to speed, so to speak, before we start playing. You know, and they've made some mistakes. So, you know, you know that's going to happen. But, um, but I've just been, been pleased with everything that these guys have been able to accomplish in the first few weeks of practice. Uh, we'll continue to get better with them. Um, but again, you, you have to go through the adversity. You have to make the mistakes so you can coach off of that so you won't make those mistakes again and continue to get better. So, um, but I'm really pleased with some of the veterans, what they've been able to do, uh, make some big time plays. Um, you know, as you look at the starters offensively, that, that whole group I think is very, very solid. To me, one of the best in the country um, as you look from top to bottom uh, with the playmakers that we have. Um, and now we've got to develop some more depth. And I think, you know, defensively, First time we've had the same defensive coaches, you know, the same scheme. So that, that's been beneficial and that's helped. 
Um, but again, developing depth with the young guys, I think, is kind of what we've been focusing on. And, and we hopefully, you know, with a few more weeks before we play, that these guys will get a little bit better with that and that experience. Uh, on Saturday, you have the first scrimmage of camp so far. From my understanding, big plays on offense and defense. When you went back and looked at the film, what pleased you the most as you analyzed it? Yeah, it was a lot of big plays early in the scrimmage, particularly offensively. I, you know, some of the playmakers, uh, Justin Marshall made some big plays. Maurice Berkeley at running back made some big plays. We held out Hawkins and Hall, you know, but then four other running backs made plays, you know, so that's great to see. And then, um, you know, for the most part, offensive line, the one first group did a great job protecting the quarterback. I thought that was good. Um, you know, Cunningham threw the ball great. Puma threw great. Evan, I mean, the quarterbacks played really good. Then in the second half of the scrimmage, I was really proud of the defense because, you know, they could have could have really easy got hung their heads, folded the 10 up and said, all right, we're done. But no, we went red zone, I think maybe scored one time in the whole last 45 minutes of practice. So they, they did a really good job of just kind of bowling their necks up and not, not giving up the touchdown. We, we feel like it's a win if we can hold teams to field goals. And, and speaking of field goals, we got a lot of good work in special teams. Um, you know, we all know we're, we're, we got some new kickers that are going to be out there, and we're still in great competition with that. Probably three or four guys that are still competing. And, um, you know, so that, that's going to be fun to see where that comes to, you know, who ends up being the player when we start the game season off. You mentioned the big plays in the scrimmage. Big plays were one of the biggest reasons that this offense made jumps last year, that the team had the success it did. How do you increase on those number of big plays offensively this year? Well, I think we just continue to do the same things that we did last year. What's different this year is the fact that where we're starting at, the starting point of the season right now, you know, we've got a lot of offense in. Where last year we were very limited in kind of some of the things that we're doing. We're still trying to figure out who can make plays, you know, who's going to be the guys that go over the top and those type things. But when you talk about some of the guys we have, um, you know, I feel like we don't have enough footballs, really. I mean, you know, there's so many guys. With, with Hawkins, who we know is one of the, the biggest threat from the running back position in the country, and then you put Hall in there, which is just as dynamic, right. who is third in the country in kickoff return, so he can fly. You know, and then when you look on the outside, some of the guys we have, I mentioned Justin Marshall, Des Fitzpatrick, Tutu Atwell, you know, and then you know, Ford at tight end is a great weapon at, you know, coming out of the, really out of the backfield also. So, um, you know, and then on top of that, you've got some quarterbacks that can run and throw. I mean, so it just, it's just a lot of big play players that we do have there. Very, very exciting if you're an offensive fan out there that wants to see points. I mean, I feel like we're going to be able to score some points. And then, uh, you know, but defensively, we all know we got to get better there. we got to, we got to be able to hold teams, and, and that's where we need to improve. And I think that's the one thing that we have to focus on these next three weeks. You're big on consistency. You've mentioned it a few times. This is the first time in a long time this defense has had the same scheme back to back. What strides have you seen from the defense so far during camp? Well, I, I think the, the ability to do a lot of different things, I think, because, you know, again, we, you know, you, you've been here a year and a half. You're not starting back from square one. And so we're able to put our base defense in early, and now we've expanded that. You know, so now we're able, to, we're able to bring pressure from all over the field. We're able to interchange some guys, move them some different spots. That will help us, and that will give you some more depth, uh, you know, if you do have issues coming in through the season. Um, you know, in this, in this scrimmage, we had a couple of guys dinged up that didn't participate in the defensive backfield, so now you're able to play a lot of young guys. And, and again, I think we can create some more depth. You know, last year, depth was an issue on defense. We didn't have as many players that we could put in there. I feel like this year we'll have a little bit more. They'll be young and inexperienced. They'll probably make a few mistakes, but you're going to still have those bodies to be able to put in there because we know if they continue to get reps, they're going to get better and better throughout the year. Who stood out so far on the defensive line in your mind so far through camp? Well, I think, you know, probably the one of the most talented one up there is Goldwire. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's a guy who's extreme size at 6'5", close to 300 pounds, but he can move and very agile. And I thought he had a solid season last year, but I think what he's been able to do this all season, man, you really can see the strides he's been able to make. Um, he's a guy that, that'll, that people have a hard time blocking. He'll probably demand a double team up front. And when you can demand a double team, we know it's going to free up those linebackers. You know, Dorian and CJ, those guys are going to be able to run. Um, and get to the ball carrier. But I think he's probably been the, the most impactful. I think, you know, as far as newcomers go, I think Yaya's got a lot of talent. You know, once he, once he figures out scheme-wise what we're doing, he's another long athlete, 6'4", can really run. I think Saturday made some plays chasing the, the quarterback out of the pocket with that, that length he's able to get to him. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about him because I think he's got a huge upside. I think he'll continue to get better and better every week. 
hey, I was excited for you to say Goldwire because I saw him in the spring and really stood out. But when, when a guy steps out of the building for four months, sometimes you don't know what they're going to come back like. So the fact that he's making plays through fall camp is a great sign for this Cardinals defense. You already mentioned it once with the special teams, and you replaced two longtime starters here. Does that become a pure competition, and how's that competition going now? It is. It's straight competition, you know. I think uh, what Cricky and, and Mason King did for the last several years here, um, you know, it's going to be a new era in the kicking here, and it's punting, and it's also in field goals and extra points. So it's wide open. You know, we're, we we want those guys to compete again. We one day we'll put you know one of the guys will get your first team, the next day maybe a third team. We just we also want to see how they react to that, and then at the same time we're trying to put them in in situations like we did in the scrimmage where we need a kick right here. You know, you trot them out there and let's see what they can do. Um, they've been doing. They've been kicking well. It's been a very, a very good competition. I'm sure this competition will probably go all the way to game week, and then we'll decide, you know, who who'll be the guy to trot out there. But I mean, you know, in in this world of kicking, man, it's uh, so much of it is mental, and, and that, so we're trying to put them in adverse situations just to play with their mind, um, so they can block all that out and just try to make the kick. Yeah, based upon our golf games, we don't have that <laughs> mental precision down, That's so right. so we won't be giving them any <laughs> advice. But I'm I'm excited to see how that shakes out. Where do you want the next three weeks of camp to go? It's obviously, you're two weeks in now, but you've never had a time where you've been away from the guys for so long. So now you've got your feet wet, what do you want to see over these next three weeks? Well, one of the things that we did different here as, a, as a, compared to a lot of other schools, we started earlier. And, you know, I, I know some schools just started practicing this weekend and we're finishing our 10th day of practice. So our thought process was let's go ahead and get it in. Let's get some scrimmages under our belt, which will be we'll scrimmage again at the end of this week. Um, and, then, and then we'll start pulling back a little bit physically. And then I think most of it's going to be mental after that point. And so, you know, we do have more time now. We're giving them two days off three different times, which in the past they've never gotten three days off in the middle of August, right? I mean, right. so, but I think that's going to pay dividends for us because they're just physically and mentally, they'll be fresher. Their bodies will be more ready to go. And so, we're, you know, hopefully that'll, that'll pay off for us. And uh, so these, the next three weeks will be – uh, finish up with a scrimmage, and then the next two will be basically mental practices getting ready for the opponent. Great stuff. Can't thank you enough for your time. Thank you for this preview. You've given all of uh, Card Nation out there. Good luck this season. Stay healthy uh, to you and your family. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for everyone for tuning in to the 2020 Virtual Kickoff Luncheon. We look forward to being back with you in person in 2021. Thank you for your support of Cardinal Athletics. Get ready for an exciting ride this season.